Welcome back to the cleanup, guys. It's been a minute. You like that pallet jar entrance? No! Today we got this disgusting for Ranger in. All you truck people that want to be cruising out on Independence Day, going on your various picnics and whatever it is you want your truck to look its best, I'm going to show you how to get there today. Let's go. You like these fuel wheels up? Fuel shock, map bronze, Falcon 80s. The first thing we're going to start doing today is cleaning the wheels. My preference, when I'm, whether it's a truck car or whatever it is, I always like to start with the wheels. They're usually the dirtiest. It gives me an opportunity to have a separate wash bucket for all of my, with all the like wheel cleaning tools in it. So that's where we're going to get started today. And look what's back. Everybody's favorite wheel cleaner. Code red, back in stock and all stores now. You get it while you can, people. We got a lot though, so we should be good. He ordered the code red. What did we do wrong? We also have a new wheel cleaner in stores by Armorall, Extreme Wheel and Tire Cleaner. I'm gonna use both today so y'all can see how they work. Let's get started. We're gonna do the front wheel with code red. Guys, please make sure that when you're applying code red or any wheel and tire cleaner that the surface is cool. Don't do this when you've just parked your car and your brakes are still hot. Told you all that a million times, but let's get rolling. Guys, we have a we have a problem. We have a cold red on the cold red. I'm wasting so much cold red, your neck gonna be vexed at me. Yes, I'm hot already. It's hot and I'm sweating and I've done one thing and there's 20 more things to do. Arm roll extreme wheel and tire cleaner. This is pretty new to our stores, but it is a very, very, very good wheel and tire cleaner. I'll show you. Apply it just like cold red, nice and liberally. You can see how much this forms up, and as you can tell by the name of it, it is a wheel and tire cleaner. Being completely honest and transparent, it is not going to give you the same insane level of wheel cleaning strength that you will get from something like Code Red, which is a dedicated wheel cleaner. Um, obviously, because the chemical makeup of the product is a little bit different to accommodate, obviously, the tire cleaning aspect as well. But I'll tell you the truth, guys, it does the job. I'm not joking. You also stop wasting time trying to manually clean wheels and tires and use products like this. It makes your life a lot easier. I'm gonna go and do the rest. Y'all aren't gonna see it. We'll come back to you in a minute. You don't have to, but one of the nice things you can use is get one of these brushes, which you'll see me use later in the fenders as well. These are soft bristles, but I like to give, I just like to give the tire a little scrub down, especially if you're using the wheel and tire cleaner. That will help get all of any, any leftover tire shine that you have. Yeah, it's always good practice to agitate the wheels and tires a little bit with a brush like this. You don't have to, but it helps. And remember guys, don't let the wheel or tire cleaner sit on the wheel for too long. So I'm gonna give every, go back around, rinse it all off, and then we will finish off cleaning the wheels. Dude, how good is Code Red though? You see this? Like I haven't done anything. I didn't even agitate or touch it. And like this wheel is, I could eat dinner off of this here now. This clean. Few wheels is look good too, boy. We got a few of these in Surrey all back on quick. They ain't give me around for long. If y'all don't know about these, we did a whole episode on these. These are detail guards, hose guides. Stick them on the corners of the tires and as you're moving around washing the car, they're gonna make your life a hundred times easier. Did a whole episode on them so y'all can go back and watch it, but you'll see how they work here in a second. This interruption was brought to you by Valvoline 10W40. But our regularly scheduled programming. So you can see the arm roll wheel and tire cleaner does a really good job as well. It's not as strong as a, as like a pure wheel cleaner as I mentioned like Code Red is. But it's going to get you 80% anyway there. And then I'm going to show you guys how to finish off cleaning your wheel. So they'll be absolutely mint. Now you all might be asking yourselves, Jeremy, can I just use wheel and tire cleaner, spray my wheels, hose them off and done with that? And I would tell you, first of all, who gave you permission to ask me questions? This is my show. I ask you questions. Damn! And secondly, no, not if you want to do it properly. Wheel and tire cleaner is going to get you 80% of the way there. It's still important, and I still always recommend using a high quality car shampoo or car soap. Today I'm using Pacific Blue Wash and Wax. This is the party size, you can carry this to effect. All right, so this wheel has been hit with code red. And now, as I mentioned, I got Pacific Blue Wash and Wax in here with some of my various favorite wheel cleaning tools. We've done a whole episode on these. I have a microfiber wash mitt, and I have one of the light lug nuts brushes in here as well so i'll show you guys how i like to do this i will start with the wash mitt and i'm just gonna give a quick pass over the wheel don't need to be too finicky because i'm gonna go at it with the brush as well boring but the mitt is just a good place to start especially on a wheel like this to get in between all these spokes so this is great to clean like the face of the wheel get the most of the spokes in between all that you'll notice sometimes when you're using wheel and tire cleaner whether it be cold red or, or armor all one or whatever you'll sometimes notice a, like it leaves behind sometimes a white residue and that's why it's really important to follow up with an actual proper like wash process to make sure the wheels are spotless you don't want to leave any of the wheel and tire cleaner on 
the wheel because it could damage the finish, right? So it's really important to make sure one, after you apply it, you don't leave it too long, rinse it off really well with the hose or a pressure washer, and then follow up with a good scrub. And then the wheel willy is perfect to get down behind the spokes into the actual barrel of the wheel. You know, this makes it really easy to clean back there, keep your barrels looking nice and shiny. This is small enough to fit behind most, certainly like trucks, you're not gonna have a problem, but it's small enough to fit behind most brake calipers. So you don't have a, you don't have to worry about that. And because the handles and everything are made of plastic, you don't have to worry about scratching the finish on your wheels. So it's a win-win. Then the final step I like to do, especially on wheels like this, that have these small little like indentations or small features or to make sure the lugs are clean. I will get my boar's hair brush and I just like to get in the lug nut holes with these, make sure that all in there is nice and clean. Get into all these little crevices here and make sure that all of this is nice and clean and there's nothing left behind. You know what I'm saying, Jeremy, this is so extra. I ain't got time for all that. Come on, if you ain't got time for all this, you better not wash your car. Here you go. Either do it properly or don't do it. You will learn by the numbers. I will teach you. Got me vex now. Got me vex cleaning wheels. I will wash people's car, you know, they just got to pay. A granny, an arrow, depending on what you want. Most people don't know, right? I swear. But the truth is, is that the, uh, the, the, I would say the most, not the most, but a good chunk of time in like terms of total time that you spend washing your car, is spent cleaning the wheels. Because the rest of it, well, except this time, because this truck is disgusting. So thanks, John. Consider this a professional courtesy. Once you get your wheels clean, and assuming your vehicle is not as stink as this one, you can actually get through the rest of the car pretty quickly. So I would say like budget half, maybe the amount of time to clean your wheels, and the next half should be cleaning the car, drying it, and getting it all finished up. So I'm gonna move on to washing the body of this truck now. First thing I'm gonna do is just empty out my wheel cleaning bucket, get rid of all these tools, because I don't need those anymore. I will clean those out once we finish filming, so I don't bore you all with that. What was my wheels bucket is gonna get rinsed clean now, and this will become my rinse bucket for when I'm washing the car, because we're gonna be using the two bucket method. Don't know what that is? Two bucket wash method. This one is gonna be my rinse bucket, which means it's just gonna have in fresh clean water. That one is gonna be my wash bucket and that's what I will make the soap solution in and keep my microfiber wash mitt and wash pad in. So I'll dip in there, get soap, clean the surface of the car, rinse before I go back in there to get all the dirt and try and separate the dirt out and keep the dirt in this bucket and clean soapy water in that one. Five years later. Dirt lock, detail guard, dirt locks. Y'all gotta have these. I recommend two so you have one in each bucket but at least this should be in your soap bucket if you don't have to. We've done an episode on these. These help separate the dirt out and keep the dirt locked into the bottom of your bucket. They slide into the bottom of your bucket and lock in perfectly. I like to keep both, one in each bucket. Keeps things nice and safe. Wash mitt, go in any soap bucket. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is just give the whole thing a hose down with the pressure washer to try and knock off as much of this dirt and stuff as I can. If you start to wash your car with things like this on it, you're gonna run into problems. This scratch city, Swirlmark city, destination scratch. This will destroy the finish on your car. This is gonna put endless scratches, swirls, marring, disgusting. You need to knock off stuff like this before you put your hands on this car in any form or fashion. So I'm gonna do that now, and then we're gonna come back. How long have we been here? Three days? And I washed two thirds of this thing. I haven't even washed it yet, I just rinsed it. As soon as the pressure washer hit the vehicle for the first time, OCD. Size is not your problem, it's just how dirty it is. Not a single part of this was clean. And I'm hot, and I'm nearly as miserable as when I had to wash those bikes. And the fort lift is going again. So 650 years later, this thing has been rinsed. I can tell y'all, when you're washing a truck or anything in particular, any, a car or truck, it doesn't really matter. And it's that dirty, having a pressure washer really makes a huge difference. You can see a pressure washer knocks off a lot of that like big heavy dirt and grime. And that really helps protect the finish when you go to actually like contact wash the car. Uh, but I'm gonna do one additional step because I have the pressure washer, foam cannon. I already have four ounces of uh, Surf City, the same Surf City Pacific Blue party size. Remember I told you guys you could take this to effect, keep it in your back pocket if you gotta wash your car. At least you got the first step covered. Uh, so I already have some of that in here. I'm gonna just add my water now and I'm gonna foam the truck completely. Then I'm gonna use the microfiber wash mitt and do the contact wash. Is foaming necessary? Uh, you, you know, it depends. Yes though, it is necessary. If you can, why wouldn't you? 
it's, it's just a, that additional layer of protection. And as I told you all, the first time you saw me foam something, it is way more fun. Oh, you having too much fun. I'm putting probably about three ounces of Pacific Blue into my wash bucket. You're gonna see me foam the whole truck. I'm not gonna rinse the foam off the car. I'm gonna foam the entire truck to get that first like base layer of lubrication. And then I'm gonna start to immediately go at it with the microfiber wash mitt. I was just adjusting the mixture, just trying to get it to foam a bit better. There we go. So one thing you'll notice uh, with this soap in particular, so you can see it foams decently, but it's not like real thick, like sticking to the car, not really dripping. And that's because most soaps that have in some sort of protectant, whether it be like wash and wax or even like wash and seals, they don't tend to generate as much like a rich thick foam as just like a pure shampoo that doesn't have any protectant in it, just due to like the nature of the chemistry and the makeup of the soap. It still foams really well, but don't be surprised if it doesn't foam as strong as some of the other foams you might have seen on YouTube or whatever, and that's, that's usually why. But it's still a great place to work, still has tons of lubrication and helps reduce the chances of scratching. Uh, you can leave the soap dwelling on the car, that's fine, it's pH neutral, it's not going to dry on there and leave any stains or marks or anything like that. Because the wheel wells are really dirty, I'm just going at them with a little bit of crystal multi-purpose cleaner and our fender brush. Obviously I already soaked these, so there's already a bit of lubrication there, but I just find the multi-purpose cleaner is a bit stronger than the soap itself and will just help get in here nice and clean. All these tools make your life a lot easier. So in general, when you're washing the car, you always want to start from the top to the bottom, so roof and make your way down. As you get lower down into the car, obviously, that's where most of the dirt and grime tends to hang on to the paintwork. So what I like to do is, once I have my sponge full of soap, I'll start at the top. The glass, you don't really have to be that concerned about because that doesn't hold on to a lot of dirt and contaminants like the paint does. But then what I'll do is, like, as I get to the door now, I'm gently just kind of making a, a couple passes at the door, but as soon as I get to like halfway, I'm going to flip my sponge over and as I'm working in this section of the door, the lower half, I'm going to be really gentle and careful and try and make as few passes as possible because this is where all that dirt hangs out and that is where you could get scratches and swirls. So like even if I have to come back to that, I'll go into my rinse bucket, try and get that dirty, grimy water out, get some fresh soapy water and if I have to, come back to that section again. Are you done? Are are you done? It may seem a bit OCD, but honestly, if you guys are trying to reduce the amount of scratches and swirls you put in your paint, this is the best way to do it. I haven't rinsed any soap off the vehicle. I like to just leave the soap on. You don't have to, but especially if you're washing in the sun like that, you know, our water here in Barbados is very hard. And if you rinse the soap off, assuming you're using a pH neutral soap like what we sell, if you rinse the soap off, the water could dry down and leave water spots, which is something else you're gonna have to deal with when you're drying it. By leaving the soap on, it really, it really decreases the chances of you drying down with water spots. And it's just gonna, again, like it's just a, like a little efficiency tip to make washing, you know, easier, faster, safer. All right, I'm gonna rinse off your car and see how dirty it is in any spots I'm missing. I'm gonna go back over, shut up. I need this long boy. This is like 1500 PSI, uh, 1.8 gallons per minute. You never need more than that for a car. Anything over 2,000, you're asking for trouble. So anything between like 1,000 and 1,500, 1.5 to two gallons a minute, you're good to go. All right, vehicle's been washed, wheels are clean, everything's rinsed off. I did a second pass, I missed a few spots, now I'll probably put them in there to make me look like an idiot. <laughs> Guys, I'm not perfect. I just try to be. Truck, car, I don't care what you have. You need one of these drying towels in your life. I swear, I promise, I promise, I promise. If you don't buy anything else that I showed you today, come and buy one of these. This will change your life. Once you start drying your truck or car or vehicle with this, you're never going back to anything else. Not only is it the safest way to dry your car, it is by far the most effective. It's gonna cut on your drying time from like, let's say 10 minutes to like three, if not less. And because it's microfiber, less chances of scratching and swirling, which is the name of the game. Today I also, we have this back in stock now, this is Ceramic Detail Spray from Surf City Garage. I like to use this when I'm drying off the vehicle, it's important to just add a little bit of lubrication. You don't have to use this one, you can use your, any other favorite detail spray you have, any of our spray waxes, quick detailer, whatever it is. It's just always best practice to hit it with a little bit of lubrication while you're drying the vehicle. Plus, using one that is either ceramic or wax, leaves that little bit of protection behind, will help enhance your gloss and keep your car looking nice and clean. Oh, that's good. I would live in there. This would probably be good with a little bit of like soda water on the rocks. Soda ceramic detail spray on the rocks. Perfect. Cheers. Uh, just like when you're washing, start from the top and come down. 
how to use this as a drying aid. It's that easy. Hit it with like a light mist as wherever you're gonna dry. This is fine on glass, plastics, chrome, now those skin up. So I'm gonna come and dry this whole side of the vehicle now. So I'm just gonna give this a little bram, 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 bram. And the crazy thing is too, is the watch, by the time I get to the next side of this car, this towel will really be working. Like it starts to work better as it gets a little bit of water in it. It's the weirdest thing. I don't understand towel technology or science or, I actually don't understand most things. But I do understand that this towel works real good. Can't tell you why, but I hope you enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, just bring it back to any store and tell them you want your money back. But we'll tell you no. The truck is dry and clean and shining. I moved it back out of the water so I can do the last step, which is to put on some tire shine. You all know right that a stoner more shine is my go-to, either this or stoner tire finish. We have like 17 different options of tire shine from the, the glossiest of glossy with crystal untouchable down to like something like this that is just gonna keep the tires nice and deep and black and not be too oily and shiny. That's my go-to. Aerosol is the easiest way to apply it. You're crying while you're doing it because it takes so long and it's big and it's dirty and people treat you badly and you're un unfaired all the time. And you have to work in these conditions. But then you end up with this. It makes it all worth it. Just give me a second. That's been it for this episode of the Clean Up, guys. Every single thing you saw me use today is available in all of our stores. Make sure you get your ride looking good for Independence Day. Christmas is coming up too, so you know these are great presents. We're gonna be putting together a bunch of Clean Up special packages just for Christmas to make sure you can outfit your friends and families with the best car care gear. I'm Jeremy, this has been the Clean Up. I'll catch you next one.